So with the limited time I had this week, uh, I thought we'd do a quick video. Uh, this will just be a quick talk about uh, FFD modifiers or, or lattice modifiers as Modal calls them. Uh, the primary reason I wanted to make this video was to show you how the fan or how the foundry has implemented them and why I don't like it. And then I'm going to show you the script that I found that's kind of old, but it still works in Moto 10. And uh, hopefully you'll get some use out of it. So the first thing we're going to do is just take a look at how the foundry has implemented FFDs within Moto. Now it could just be that I don't know the easy way of doing this, but this is the way that I figured out to use them. So let's just throw a quick mesh in here. We'll just, you know, we use a uh, torus for this. Now in polygon mode, uh, I've got a pie menu that flies out so I can add a lattice deformer on here. So I see a lattice deformer and I'm going to do a one by one by one. And I say, okay. So you can see it's thrown a cage around my mesh. So if I select these points now and drag them, and you can see that the mesh deforms uh, according to the distance of the verts to those control points that I'm dragging. And it should become pretty evident right now how useful this is. You know, you can shape meshes, give them stylization. Uh, if a mesh needs to be nudged or whatever, or, or butted up against another one, you can easily do all that. And you, know, you can get pretty crazy with it too. And you can get little weird shapes, stuff, just stuff that would be a pain in the butt to model. But in here you're like, oh, okay, well I'll just you know, uh, drag these verts around and soft select and all that kind of uh, good stuff. The primary problem I have uh, with the way it's been implemented is that now I want to just, like freeze that. I want to keep this, right? Okay. So what I have to do is I have to go up to geometry, freeze, and freeze the geometry because that freezes my deformation in place. And now I have to go over to here and delete the lattice effector. You know, and there's my deformed mesh. Now that's not terrible, but I'm going to show you a script now that makes this a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's do that same sort of operation, but using the script instead. So the script assigns itself to, well, it doesn't assign itself. You have to assign it to a hotkey. So I've got this pop-up now. And we're gonna throw a two by two by two cage on here. So it throws it on. And I can grab points and start dragging them around. You know, this is exactly the same as what we just saw with uh, with the foundry implementation, right? There's the same shape more or less that I created over there. Now the difference is uh, when I'm done, I just pull my menu up and I say, uh, apply. And it applies it, it kills the FFD and locks the shape in. That to me is far more conducive to quick little tweaks. And you know, I'm gonna uh, jump in there and change something real fast and not have to go through a whole production of, okay, now I have to freeze it. Now I have to delete that thing. And yeah, I could probably script up a macro or something, but honestly, this script works so well that I don't need to. So yeah, I like it. And just to give a more complete view of what an FFD will do, uh, you know, here we got, here I have a sub D box. So I've just thrown some control points on and some extra loops. So we have some resolution to drag things around with. So if I hit tab and go into sub D mode, uh, the FFDs work exactly the same in here as they do anywhere else. And for fun, we're going to throw a more complicated page, a cage on. Let's do a three cage, right? This gives you a point in the middle, which is really useful and can do fun stuff. Like you can make things kind of have a, you know, a bow in the middle, pretty simply. So you see that part in the middle is sort of swooped up and the stuff around the edges where I haven't touched these points is still locked down. So this leads to lots of good opportunities for adding character to a mesh or getting a specific shape that you want or for whatever you might need it to do. You know, and of course, as always, when you're done, you just hit apply and it locks it in. Now, if I come out of FFD and you can see the resulting, you know, there's the FFD we were looking at, sorry, the sub D we were looking at. If I turn that off, you can see how, how the mesh got manipulated. You know, and that's really what an FFD is uh, in a nutshell. Uh, this script allows a four by cage, which is 
much more complicated now, and has a lot more subtlety to it but you know they all have uses so if I do that let's say we'll also grab that pull it up and then maybe we're going to start to rotate this a little bit pull it up like that apply this yeah, and then FFD it again. You can see you can get all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, and it looks like just uh, typically you have this situation where someone's showing a cool feature off and you're like, yeah, that's great for a demo, but you're never going to use it like in your everyday work. But you know, I promise you, you will use this in your everyday work. Uh, I do, certainly. So uh, I guess that's it for FFDs. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say without, you know, repeating what other videos have said a hundred times. So go forth and deform. So I think that's it. Uh, there's your look at FFD modifiers within Modo. Uh, I'll put a link to that script down in the description of the video and uh, have fun.